Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? Welcome to another episode of Sleep is for Billionaires, the podcast. I am your host, Johnny Vegas. Now, my next guest, very special dude, you know what I'm saying? He's from my hood, from New York City, you know what I'm saying? Actor, writer, producer. You definitely gonna see him on the new season of Ballers coming out right now on HBO. Ladies and gentlemen, Lorenzo Antonucci. Did I get it correctly? Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. I was, I was, I was, I was like, oh my God, let me, let me not fuck this dude's last name up. Nah, man, Antonucci is, you know, it's, 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 it's a name that comes from the Roman Empire, believe it or not. Okay. Anthony. Nice. Yeah. So you got some history behind your name, yeah, man. Yeah, it's, uh... Well, Michael Anthony and Michelangelo, I'm fucking it up right now, but yeah, they used to, uh, he was best friends with Julius Caesar, so it was Michael Antonius turned into Antonucci, and they used to bang out Cleopatra together. Nice. Uh, all the Roman Empire, yeah. So I'm yeah. Ro- I have Ro- half Roman, because I'm half Puerto Rican, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New York Puerto Rican. Hey, they already know, baby. Sure, yeah, my name, I was actually named after the Cheyenne Indian, that's my real name, yeah, if you yeah. know. So yeah, I, I know, was, I do know. I, 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 I was I, I was intrigued by the name because it it, it, it is a it's not a name you hear all the time. Right. Especially right. Right now, but mm-hmm. that's dope. That's yeah. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, man. It, it was either gonna be that or like Lewis or Marlon, some dumb stuff like that was gonna name but I ain't idea. But yeah, man. Now nah, we brought you on the show today, man. I want to share this story with you. Ever since I met you, you seemed like a guy who was really about your business. Focus. Every time I talk to you, you had different opportunities going on. But before we get into that, I want to talk about the beginning. I want to talk about where the motivation came from and what actually brought you to LA to pursue this dream and goal of yours. Well, I mean, to, to, uh, I mean, it's a long story. I man, start from the beginning. It's. Uh, I mean, not from like the day you were born. No, you know? no, no, no. <laughs> how 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 I got because I come yeah. from music. I was right. in a band. I taught the world. Mm. I did that for ten years, and uh, that journey started in 2000. Mm. And at the end of 2009, I was done. Uh, you know, I toured all over the world, did the biggest festivals, did the biggest tours with the biggest bands. What was the name metal, of your band? Sworn Enemy. It was Swan metal Man. rock. You know, metal, heavy metal, hardcore. You know, street hardcore. You know, it was yeah. like, you know, it, it, it wasn't like some you know commercial shit. It was, right. it was rugged. Were you the lead or you were the guitar? I played the lead guitar and I did some back to vocal. Nice. But um, I did that for 10 years and that was a crazy journey and met a lot of people through those years. And my agent Mm -hmm. at the last leg of our touring days was Ash Allison, who's a really good friend of mine, Mm -hmm. one of my best friends. Nice. He, he basically was my agent when he started in a studio uh, of like a one bedroom apartment in Venice. Mm-hmm. And he was, you know, our booking agent for music. Right. So he trained, you know, he, he, he did a, he started doing his thing. We were one of his biggest bands and we became really good friends. And then that was in like 2006. And then we just kept always staying in touch and working together and yada, yada, yada. And mm-hmm. 2000, 12, I'm living in Austria, cut to all the, you know, all the yeah. bullshit, a lot of touring and all this shit, and I've been living in Austria, 2012, he hits me on Facebook, yeah. just by, because, you know, like, it, the cell service was a little different, it wasn't like FaceTime was easy yet and all that, to, right, to right, do it right. overseas and everything, so he hits me on Facebook, what are you doing, you gotta move to LA. Mm. I like, so I get on a fucking call with him, and he's like, yo, we gotta figure it out, you gotta get out of here. And it was 2012, and it was like, the, the end of 2012, I was like, yeah, what am I gonna do in LA, bro? I don't know, I mean, I've been here a million times, toured, recorded, shot videos out here, all that shit. And he was like, I don't know, we'll figure it out, we'll make you a wrestler, you'll be the Puerto Rican Italian from Queens, <laughs> but we'll make you like The Rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was yeah. like, uh, all right. Uh, Sounds right, good. I right. guess it's a good That's idea, right. I'll come. Yeah. So cut to, I'm training in Knox Pro Wrestling. Okay. Completely shut down the recording business. Me and my ex-girlfriend broke up. It was tragic. Oh, it was, God. She was like, what the fuck? And I just <laughs> fucking moved here with a bag in my fucking Nissan Maxima from Queens. Yeah. Because I was back and forth from Austria and Queens. Mm-hmm. And, um... So now I fucking, you know, now, now, now I'm here being trained for wrestling. I have no idea about the wrestling business and I never knew about acting. Yeah. 
not a clue about acting, auditions, headshots, nothing. No. Not yeah. a fucking clue. I was so into in my world. That's all you needed to know. Yeah. Was recordings and uh, you know who's gonna give us an advance to record the next record and who's our booking agent, how we tour in the world and being an animal, being an animal. Yeah. That's all I knew. Or being in the street on the block in my neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. There was no nothing else in doing construction on the side. Right. Nothing else. So I was always told you're a funny motherfucker, you need to be on TV, but uh, yeah, how? How do I do it? So you tried know. wrestling first when you came out here? So I moved here, wrestled, I trained with Rikishi, Reno, and Gangrel. Rikishi's the Rock's cousin. Okay. So, you know, that's his whole Samoan dynasty, Rock, Dwayne Johnson, that's mm -hmm. his cousin. Rikishi's the one that used to put his big ass in people's faces. I remember and that. He's, He's like, what? Uh, Samoan, Samoan, yeah, okay. Samoan, Samoan. So it's all part of the Samoan dynasty. Right. And I was doing it for about a year and a half. I trained. I didn't love it. I was 35. Mm -hmm. I didn't love it. I hurt myself a few times and I, you know, I, I just slowly let it phase away. But in the meantime, my roommate at the time was an actor, Joey, my boy. I love Joey. I owe it all to him. You know, he was like, yo, you need to fucking get your headshots. I'm like, what a headshot? What are you talking about? <laughs> That's me. I only know like, one headshot. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And he's like, dad. Hey, Go get your headshots, your fucking face, bro. And he showed me his headshots, and I was like, oh. And he's like, yo. <laughs> he's, your fucking face. he's like, he's like, yo. He's like, I'm on fucking CSI Miami and Two and a Half Men, and he showed me all his parts of his reel, and I'm like, yeah, fuck it. He's like, oh, I made 13 grand, 12 grand on this. I said, what? I said, this sounds great. I don't, I still never seen anything like that, yeah. but. It was in, it was in, inspired me, yeah. intrigued me to go get my headshots and sign up for LA casting mm -hmm. and do the fucking yeah, shit work. from the ground up from 2013. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't have any success. Mm -hmm. You know, it was rough. You know, yeah. Nobody knew. I knew nothing about the business. So I was starting over at 35 years old. So it's fucking hard, bro. Yeah. Honestly, I started over. That's I scary, started, man. Yeah. At 35, yeah. Yeah. At 36, I pretty much. That's when I when I, I, I was a co-writer, I mean, I a, I mean, a co-producer, mm -hmm. and, and I wrote additional material for the first comedy that I did. I was a lead actor, in okay. one of the leads. So me, Ash, Ash wrote it. Ash Allison, he wrote What's it. What's the name of that? What now? It's a yeah. comedy about Tinder. We no, we, nobody else fucking came out with Tinder. We yeah. came. That shit came out three years ago. Right. The movie came out. We were the only ones doing that shit, swiping, looking for chicks on fucking yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Just, it's the modern day swingers. Right. You know, uh, you know, uh, online dating in LA. And I play a fucking wrestler that's a bouncer to pay my fucking bills. So it's the typical LA bullshit. He's yeah. a fake DJ trying to front. And uh, the dude that lives in, in here, my, my roommate, yeah. he plays a fake CAA agent, but he's like a fucking travel agent fucking calling breaking balls kind of guy. You yeah. Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking, I can't articulate the name of what they do, or the, the, the travel agent guys. Uh, you know, yeah, 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 what I call you, salesman. Travel, yeah, salesman. And, uh, you know, and I, I, I helped on the writing with that. And I, obviously, I was a producer on it, and, and I was the lead. That was the first time that shit was 2014, the first thing I ever did, really. Mm -hmm. And then um, it came out 2015. It did okay for us, a bunch of guys that don't know what they're doing, but what now? Not the Kevin Hart comedy. Mm -hmm. We were out before that, but Kevin Hart, obviously, is what now is. Yeah, a lot of I mean, I did annihilate it a little more. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we're, we're humble enough to know that people are looking for what now. If they see our poster, they find it, they like it, they go click on it. Well, why can't somebody see that if they wanted to research? It's on whatnot. iTunes, it's on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Um, it never had a theatrical release, but you know we did it for like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We had no idea, but it looks like a real movie. It's yeah, a real movie. It's not like the the ones that are making cringe and you're like ah, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's actually a funny ass movie, very um, never done before because it's all about lying to chicks about your online social media profile. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do. So it hasn't been done yet. It hasn't been done yet. Still. We're like the only ones that ever got to do it, but we didn't have the proper distribution mm. to uh, 
get it uh you just see my chancla, right? And it's all good. I don't give a fuck. Boom, baby. <laughs> Sly Stallone shop. Go to the Sly Stallone shop. <laughs> fucking, you know, Sylvester Stallone's fucking Rocky Rocky flip flops. They're called the slides for Sly Stallone slides. S L Y D E S. There you go. So you have thoughts of revisiting that what now project to like release on a bigger scale or platform now? I mean, we we always. Uh, Kind of, you know, we're wondering how do we recut it now that we know the business is not more. Because me and Ash, we and Frankie Nassau, but Frankie Nassau, you know, he was a producer on it, mm -hmm. and he was the one that really knew the business more than we did at the time. So Frankie, you know, with his dad, you know, he grew up in the movie business. His dad direct, uh, produced all the Steven Seagal masterpieces, all the big ones, yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. the monsters, the like siege, and all that. Yes, all the all the big ones out, you know, out for justice, all that shit. Mm -hmm. So his father, so he grew up in that world, so he really knew what he was doing. So he's the one that really steered the ship, but we were just blind, like had no idea. Y'all were just fucking writing lines mm -hmm. and. And, his, and Ash is, I'm directing, but I don't know, I never did this in my fucking life, but Ash's father is John G. Allison, mm. the Rocky director, Karate Kid, one, two, three, lean on me, his father, but they didn't have a relationship until the, the next movie. Yeah. They never had a relationship. That's, these are facts, but that's mm. his real dad. Yeah. And so he was ambitious and inspired to become who he had, who he's become with Sumerian Records and Sumerian Films mm. and his cosmetic line, and like, he's a beast. Yeah, he's a man. Like he's a beast. Man. So that was all materializing in 2015, and you know I did a bunch of uh, commercials. My, one of my one of my other great friends, you know, is another like a brother, best friend of mine, Zach Murphy. He's a mm -hmm. huge director in commercials and about to pop. We just we're we're, we're doing our deal right now for the, the movie called The Shattering, okay. which is his first feature that he's going to direct. Um, it's a you know horror kind of like quiet place meets uh, cabin in the woods, mm. a creature feature, uh, an eighty style camp horror. You know, um, I like that that's, creature, that's, creature feature. I, I like yeah. that idea. So, so doing that and, uh, and 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 that's was my you know like up until two thousand sixteen. That's what I did mm. for the first two two years. Like fourteen and sixteen was just learn the business and. You know, I was trying to earn and make it all happen. Yeah. So that, that film that you're talking about now that you're currently, you're still in dealings now to try to get it out there? As no, well? it's out. It's, it's, right? it, we, we're just not promoting it. It's just floating in the fucking in the matrix, bro. It's just like, you know, what we could do is, you know, one of us start to start to get notoriety and, you know, we start, you know, like Ash is really driven to be a director yeah. and, and, and producer. He's, he was an actor and what now, but he's not really driven to act. But he will though, he's not like, you know, maybe he'll change his mind, but he doesn't matter, you know. But as all of us elevate, the movie can, you know, be revisited and recut, and redid this, yeah. or, or just shot the whole, shoot the whole fucking thing again, because mm. it's ours, you know what I mean? So like, you know, we don't we don't know what to do with it, right? We, we looked at that as like, a, college mm. you know like freshman year you know yeah. we didn't know what we were doing but we just you know he was like i'm gonna front all the money and i'm gonna fuck and i'm and we all gonna get get on and i got my sag through that I nice the first movie i did i was on 18 days on set and i fucking got sad and, I and you guys it. did this all by yourself like created the opportunity for you guys to act in it you wrote it yeah, yeah. made it sag it. and that was with frankie nassau and, and he's the one that knew me all the, 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 the logistics, black and white. yeah, all the logistics that he needed, and Brad, our boy Brad, he's the one that, that you know, that dealt with SAG, and then we all, we, we were good, you know, I mean, from that, I know I got my SAG, I don't know what the rest yeah. of the motherfuckers did, but I got SAG. That's awesome, man, yeah. that's great that you that's actually, you started. now that's good, man, that people need that advice, that you created your own opportunity, instead of waiting for somebody to give it Trail to you, and then made your own SAG, create your own fucking destiny, man, and these oh, people yeah. out here are gatekeepers, and they think they gatekeepers, Think they're gonna hold you fucking down? Just go right through them, around them, under them, over them. However you gotta go through it. Don't ever fucking think that people are gonna, you know, really do anything for you. You gotta create your own destiny, especially in this fucking town, because nobody wants you to win. Everybody wants you to lose. Tell me about it. 
since I'm dealing with it every day, man. Mm -hmm. But it's a grind, man. So, I mean, do you say acting has been, like, good to you as far as, like, profitable? Like, at this point, you know, like, 2018 going 2019, like, do you feel? No. No? No. It's, it, it pays the bills when the checks come in, but it's, it's, it's to me, I, I look at long term, you know, I, you know, I have side hustles, I have other ways to, 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 to make yeah, ends meet, mm -hmm. and I'm struggling still. I'm, str I'm not, I'm not going to front and say I'm balling, you know, I hang out with people who ball yeah. all day, every day, but they went through the same exact steps I went through. They were fucking, they had the same issues, the same shit, because you, you can't work a nine to five and do what you want to do at the same time because you're spending 10 hours a day working for somebody else's company and you mm -hmm. take that away from yours. So you have to figure out how to just get by because yeah, you can make 50, 60,000 doing something cool out here yeah. and it pays the bills. That's all it does. It right. pays the bills. You won't be able to do anything else because that's not enough money in LA. Right. But then you, you're spending 10 hours a day, 40 hours, 45 hours a week on somebody else's journey, their company, their, their their establishment, their dream, their yeah. dream and you're, you're not putting all those hours into yours. And when you're home, you're too tired to even give a fuck. You're right. just like, oh, I'll figure it out the weekend. So what I'm saying is that you gotta figure out how to kind of earn while you're learning. Yeah. That's what I call it, earning while I'm learning. And uh, I, 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 I've, earned a lot of, I've earned a lot of money working in the movie business. I, I, I didn't even, like, I, my first fucking couple of years, I was really like, yo, is this what it really is? Is this how it is? Because yeah. I feel like I'm on. But, yeah. You know, then you get smacked, and then you get you, you hit rock bottom, and you come back up, and it's like a roller coaster every day. And then you can fucking, you know, it's hard, man. But like, you know, the, you gotta it, stick with it. If you don't, then what's the point? Then you're a failure. And that's that's what I believe. I believe you ain't you don't truly fail until you give up. You quit. You you're a failure. Yeah. You know, you, you don't fail. You never. You can never fail. So you what do you think? Never fail. So what do you think is your biggest like success being a uh, like, like you know movie role or in music or producing something that what was the most successful thing you've done? Well, I mean the biggest things I've done so far for network stuff. I mean I've done a bunch of features that I was a producer on um, that had small acting roles, or bigger acting roles, and small independent stuff, horrors that are, you know, all this stuff is just starting to come out now in the last mm -hmm. two years that I've done. But it's all independent, small stuff, and it's good humbling stuff, and then, you know, I, I'm excited to be a part of it, but like, you know, obviously, Network, I, my first, in 2016 and 17, I did Days of Our Lives, and that mm -hmm. was pretty epic for me because I grew up with my mother watching novelas, and yeah. I used to love novelas. You know, <laughs> watching Days of Our Lives with my ex-wife, yeah. She got me into it 20 something years ago, so I would watch it and I manifested. I was like, I'm gonna end up being on that show one day. And I did it, four episodes. I manifest everything I do yeah. and believe in manifestation. It's right. a real fucking thing. Mm -hmm. Don't ever fucking think that you can't do anything because I'm doing the craziest shit in the world right now that I've never thought that I could do because I'm a dope from the street, mm -hmm. seventh grade education, dropout, no GED, no high school diploma, and I don't give a fuck. I will never get any of those things because none of those things matter because I know what is best for me and I know how to, you know, hustle. So, uh, right. then, you know, uh, you know, the movie that I was a producer on, American Satan, that really had a, 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 a success this year and last year. It was uh, AMC released it on, uh, it did a theatrical, we did about 55 theaters, and it's all independent. Mm -hmm. This is all independently, about five guys in an office in one fucking war room grinding. Mm -hmm. AMC released it, Miramax distributed it worldwide. Um, we had some recognizable faces in the movie. It's a success, it's doing well. The brand is kicked off and now we're doing a spin-off TV series independently. Mm. And it's gonna look dope and we don't give a fuck. You know? yeah. Or it's gonna get picked up. But right now it's on Showtime. Um, uh, it came out July 1st on Showtime, American Satan. It's another one. I have a small little, I'm not really an actor in it, but yeah, I was heavily, you know, behind the camera on that one. Mm. So that was a success into Ballers. Ballers, I shot episode three and nine of season four, which is, uh, was, uh... You acted in it or you shot it? Uh, that came up No, uh, acted. Okay. Yeah, I'm not acting in it. Speaking lines so, and everything? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what's up. Full, yeah, I'm one of the New York Goombas, man. I played 
pretty much who I am, but like a New York Guido. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's... <clears throat> well, I know the show has to do with him being a sports agent, so are you actually like in the, like in the sports arena, or are you just like... A guy on the street that meets No, I'm a guy on the street that 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 um, I don't want to give the storyline away. Yeah. I meet one of the base the football players and you know I, me and a bunch of other guys we kinda like, you know Most befriend them. Oh. No, we befriend them and then we kinda start like, yo, you know, stick with us. Yeah. You know, yeah. kinda gangster guys, mob guys, yeah. whatever you wanna call it. Yeah. That's what we do with that. <clears throat> and and then I just did something Phenomenally, you know, like another monster show that I can't name. You no, know, I can't name it. And uh, you know, it's probably one of the the, the, the next monumental moment of 2018. Even though I lost two of my best friends, Papa and Paul, you know, Nick, and I love you guys. I lost Sorry, two of my man. best friends back home. Very, very. Uh, to, I'm talking about not guys I knew. Well, no, I'm talking about my brothers, you know, and the guys I grew up with in the street, and uh, two of them passed away, which... So I had some weird, uh, the worst things happen, and the best things happen all at once. And every time one of my best friends passed away this year, one of them, another door opens, so it's kind of weird. Yeah, man, those things like that happen, and I just, like, when my grandmother passed away, you know, I actually, you know, got a, uh, my sag. You know, I got, I got inside, but it's like, I just, going deep into thought, I just feel like, you know, those, sometimes they, those are angels yeah. blessing you, you know what I'm saying? Boy, yo, my mom was killed in a car crash in Puerto Rico, bro, visiting my aunt. Damn. 2004. That was the fucking craziest shit I ever had to go through, bro. I don't even know how I... And then, long story short, a month later, I'm on tour with my band. I saved a fucking family of five in a car crash on the highway in Ohio somewhere. That shit was flipping. I seen the tire pop and I'm like, Paulie, who just passed away, mm -hmm. fucking in January, my fucking, the one I was talking about, he's driving, I'm in the back. He was my drummer at, at the time of the band. He's driving, I'm like, Paulie, pull the fuck over. I see the fucking car flipping, bang, 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 bang. Five people, Asian family, grandma, mother, father, daughter, and son. I fucking said, pull the fuck over. I ran, dodging traffic, dodging fucking cars, fucking, almost getting killed, and that shit's flipped on the side, smoke, fucking screaming, they're all bloody, I yanked them all out of the car. Damn. Yanked them all out, and put them on the side, and I was like, you guys, and then people started pulling over, you guys okay? And everybody was in shock, bro, glass all over their face, and it was fucked up, and everybody was in shock. I placed all five of them together, and I made sure all of them were breathing and looking at me, and I fucking left. Because then people started coming to help me. Yeah. I was out. Like, I was a ghost, bro. Yeah. I came in fucking like a superhero, bro. It was the fucking angel, sweat. Though. That was my mom. Like, here. Yeah. Save them because I wasn't saved. You know what right. I mean? Like, crazy shit. Crazy shit like that. Nah, but shit like that is going to bless you because that came naturally from the heart. You know what oh, I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. I wasn't premeditated. It's just like, oh, shit. So that just, mm -hmm. that right there tells me the type of person you are just yeah, off that yeah, incident. Sure. You know what I mean? But that's dope as hell, man. So are you, are you still involved in the music business? Because I know you said you let it go, but... You know, I know yeah. you say you're working with a few artists yeah. as well. Well, I mean, uh, uh, so, um, um, one of my longtime friends, we call each other cousins, you know, because we, you know, everybody said we looked alike back in the day, so we, you know, we're, we're like cousins, so we call each other cousins. And right. He's got his label's commission records. They got a little Dicky. Commission, I heard about yeah, that. Yeah, like, I said on my Instagram and stuff. Uh, he got a little Dicky, uh, Made in Tokyo, 24, Commission Music is you know, management part of the, the, the division. So they got Envy, they got the Reggie Sean, they got Mad News. So on the hip hop side, I'm like involved, trying to develop a little bit of a metal rock side. And now I'm trying to, you know, like bring in some hip hop stuff on the West Coast for commission. On the rock and metal side also, I'm with Sumerian Records, Sumerian Films. So that's all Ash's company. So I'm like, I, I dabble in there. And I bring opportunities and things materialize, but they don't. And you know, there's a. It's almost like a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a
being set. Being set as an established real actor that's out there doing it and people know who the fuck I am. Mm -hmm. For me to be able to be like, ah, I want to go on tour with one of my boys band and be like, you know, being on stage and people, you know, like that, be like, you know, if The Rock was on playing yeah. on the top, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, the, like, the, that's the, the man has to be there. Yeah, yeah, the vision I have just as, as, as a fun little thought in my mind. But I, I don't really want to uh, do music. I did it since I was... 14 or 13, I was playing and yeah. I wasn't too successful at it. I mean, I, yeah, I toured the world, you know, more than other people have success out of it. I toured the, the entire world, you know, and for free and did everything you can imagine. Mm. But it wasn't like my band exploded and it was the biggest thing in life to, to make a living out of it forever. What's your definition of success? Being able to do what you love and pay your bills. Okay. Yeah, you're living off your passion. That's my definition. Yeah, Nakaro, you mentioned you toured the world and your band you was killing it and doing your things or whatever. But you mentioned that you made it seem as if it wasn't successful. And I'm like, damn, like you did a whole lot more than I did. I mean, I toured in Florida, but that's about it. So I'm like, wow, like well, your goals either must be that big or you must have a di different definition. Well, the successful, well, successful enough to say I was able to do what the successful guys get to do every day and make a living constantly and buying houses and cars off and doing what I used to do and had a taste of, that's a different level of success. It was successful enough to say we left Queens playing Castle Heights, which was in Jackson Heights, or playing in the Bronx or, you know, in Yonkers, or playing in Brooklyn you know, or Manhattan, CDs or, 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 or um, CBGBs or um, Coney Island High or uh, Wetlands, all these old school spots. We used to play there, like we were successful enough to be like, yo, we just played in Russia. Mm -hmm. We just played in Japan. We just played in all over Europe 10,000 times. Like that was successful enough, but it wasn't like I was coming home and I was like, yo, I'm buying fucking cars, houses. No, that was the difference was like, I was able to do it to a fact that I could come home and pay the rent mm -hmm. or give my father money, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, and or pay some bills and then go back to work. So yeah. I, I was a construction guy, I'm, you know, my, one of my good friends, Paulie, got a construction business and he would, and my other friend, Dave, all these guys were always giving me side work. You know, mm -hmm. I would always do construction on the side. They fucking, to pay the bills, bro. I mean, you gotta do that, man. I mean, I'm the same way now. I mean, acting is cool, but I'm on the Postmate, Uber Eats hustle, you know what I'm you saying? Shooting videos, taking, shooting people's headshots. I do all that shit, bro. Like, you gotta do everything. Yeah, yeah. that rent ain't cheap out here in LA. I'm no. telling you. It's fucking as expensive as Manhattan. Exactly. It's fucking crazy. You get a palm in here, what, $3,900 to fucking pay for this fucking place? See? Two bedroom loft. So you got the law. Yeah, but I, I, I got the I, studio. I paid two thousand out of my end. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's not too bad. That's a lot for people who don't have a regular job. I don't work. I don't work for nobody. Mm -hmm. Nobody's my boss. That's right. straight up. Mm -hmm. So I make it happen every day. I make a living. I'm able to eat. I'm able to pay the bills. But I don't work. I don't get an answer to nobody. I don't got it. I can wake up whenever the fuck I want. I can go to the gym whenever the fuck I want. I can work to whatever I want. So that's, to me, is I am successful in this business because I'm able to do it. And I just want to live off the success. Live off my passion. I like that. And just keep, you know, generating more and more success out of it and becoming bigger and bigger because I know myself, the more I have, the more I'll give to all people I know who are in my shoes or people that I know from home that are ambitious enough to try to do it, but they, they're a little worried about making the next step. Like, I wouldn't have never made the step out here if Ash wasn't like, come up to LA and we'll figure it out. And I would have never thought about it, or I don't know, maybe I would have, but I just didn't think about it. He's the one that brought me. I could do that. I was hoping to do that with Paulie because he was another character just like me, but he passed away. I, I, it's the, it's a, it kills me, bro. But you know, that's the the difference in, in the success. So now, if I could bring my peoples out here, all my people are back home. They don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. I don't got any name. They know. 
I'm out here show, whatever. They call me Hollywood now. Nah, yeah. yeah. They don't fucking want to break my balls. I don't give a fuck. They know I love them. I get that too. <laughs> so, I would love to bring them out here and, and, and keep it moving. Yeah. And that's that's I mean, what I find success. That's that's going to happen. You know, it sounds like you got big dreams and big goals and you're, you're, you're so in it for the ultimate. That it's fucking makes me sick sometimes and I'm just like, am I ever going to get there? I don't think no dream is too big. You know what I mean? And, just, and if you thought about it, that means somebody else done it before. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And it's like anything's possible to me, bro. Like I felt the same way. Like I was dodging fear left and right because of my secure job I had making crazy money but I'm like damn I'm not happy so I wanna be on I wanna be an actor I wanna be a rapper I wanna do this that and the third in LA I need to get there so I took the jump but it took a while for me to make that jump you know I had to I had to get fired from that job. You know what I'm saying? Which happened so that was the bug. I was like oh shit fuck that I ain't got no job I'm out. So I took my savings, took my girl and bounced and making it happen. So I definitely feel you on that. So um so what's next for you now, man? Like, you know what I mean, are you thinking about putting other hats on in the entertainment world? I know you mentioned you produce, you write, you know, but anything other than that, you wanna just focus on those three acting, producing and writing and just make a success. Oh, that's a totally mine, villainfuture.com, V L L N F U T R dot com. It's a streetwear for gangster nerds, what we call it. Com Com meets Fairfax. Okay. Um, it's part of a movie we're doing. I can't name the movie. We're like in really early development with it. So we like, sell the clothing. Online. Oh, yeah, so online. Yeah, okay. they have a web, uh, uh, Instagram, Villain Future, B L L N, B L L N F U T R. You know, at B L L N F U T R. Yeah. And you're a designer on that, correct? We designed it up. Me, me and two of my partners, yeah. But uh, the main partner, he, he he came up with the idea. We played around with names. It was going to be future villain. I said, let's do a uh, future. And then we just kept, you know, <clears throat> we did a bunch of photo shoots with some chicks and some dudes. And, you know, we created this. Uh, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, like a... Uh, Little, little bit of dark goth, but more street, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not like, you know, like, uh, like oh, I'm a vampire. Yeah. yeah. It's, fucking, it's, like, it's like, you know, motherfuckers that like dark shit. Yeah, yeah, Somebody yeah. who likes the crow and like Star Wars could walk on the street drinking a 40, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's where our head's at with it. And I think that, you know, and I have a reference to I haven't seen somebody drink a 40 in so long. Yeah, I know, you reference the part I'm like, damn, they, they even still make all really? the shit. I seen it, I seen it. My boy just went to an old school 90s party and he yeah. had a St. Eyes, uh, St. Eyes. St. Eyes, yeah. And I was like, yo, I remember drinking St. Eyes. That was the worst tasting beer ever. Oh my God. The worst man. hangovers. But the OV was like, shit. <laughs> we used wow. to have a Timberland box, me and Papa. Yeah. That's the way it was just fucking. Month ago, we yeah. came in and had a tin box full of all the OE caps. Yeah, that we would just throw them in there, and we had about 1,100 wow. caps in there. After like a few months, we were like, "Yeah, how much money that is? Or like 1,200? It was like 2,200. It was a, it was two dollars and 25 cents back then." And, and how many months did you spend that? Two, three months. Oh man. Yeah, like just like you know, we would all. I mean, we were all. Yo, I, I used to go to my grandma. Well, I don't pay so you need to do almost every season. And she'd be like. <laughs> All right, I don't mind. No, I was 16. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My grandmother passed away when I was 19. I was 16, 17, me and P. Used but now, nah, man, that's cool as hell, man. Nah, it sounds like you got a lot going on, man, especially with the fashion uh, fashion line, man. You know, you definitely want to uh, diversify, yeah. especially in this business, just to keep uh, reinventing yourself, you know, and keep more avenues of streams of revenue coming in. So that's really good, man, man. I'm glad you came through and did my podcast with me. And I know we've been trying to schedule this out. Yeah, it's yeah. been up and down, man, but we finally got it out the way, man. And it's like, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. You know what I'm saying? You got a great story, and I hope people watch this and get some motivation from it. You know, he's a he's just like us, you know what I'm saying? He's, he's one of ours, you know, from New York, street dude, made it happen, you know what I'm saying? Put fear aside and just went with faith. And look at him now, you know, he's grinding just like us, so. Just tuned into another episode of Sleepers for Billionaires, the podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Vegas, my boy Lorenzo. Johnny! Where can people follow you, man? Give people everything, man. I want people to look you up now. I'm Lorenzo Antonucci Jr. for Instagram handler. Uh, 
you know, Facebook Lance Anthony, you know, uh, I don't have like a website, man. Go click on my IMDb. Yeah, that's all you need. That's all you need. That's how 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 you need.